Hello, Hello darkness, my old friend. What's cracking, big dogs? Welcome back to the Contaminated Dungeon. This is the Fade the Public podcast. I am Nicholas. That is Animal. And across from me is the ninth wonder of the world, Snacks. Oh, Ooh, wow. Oh, good hop. Woo! Your training a, camp is in full effect. My hands are in full Wait, effect. Throw it to you? Yeah, Cincinnati throw it to you. Bengals might need to work me out. Over the weekend, star wide receiver AJ Green expected to miss six to eight weeks after suffering torn ligaments in his left ankle. Because they are actually the Giants might need to work me out, to be honest with you. After those fucking hands. Chill. We'll get into all of that today. We're getting back into a segment that we did a few weeks ago, which was probably one of my favorite segments that we've done on the show thus far. We call it Parade It or Fade It. And it's almost like an over under version where Animal has set up about a dozen questions, and me and Snacks will talk about whether or not we will fade or parade the statement. It might be a statistic. It might be, uh, it's, I think they're literally all statistics, so that's exactly what it's going to be. Yeah, just but, stuff that could maybe happen this season. Or you know, could probably or not. Mo- yeah, or it won't. Yeah, last time Animal's statements were fucking absurd. And they're <laughs> yeah, supposed, I, think, I think these are better. They're supposed they're to make better. you think critically whether or not you would parade it or fade it. Parade it means that you believe the statement will happen. Fade it means that you are going to fade the statement. Yeah, you don't I think went, it's going to happen. I went too bold last time. You went way too bold last time. You way improved a little bit. I still think there is uh, definitely some room to grow as a man, as a father that you are. But, you know, listen, we'll try this again before the season kicks off. And before the season kicks off, training camp happens. And what happens in training camp is a lot of fucking injuries, a lot of people on Twitter yapping their mouth. So we're going to talk about some of the biggest things that have happened in the NFL training camp world thus far. Outside of Devontae Parker catching a pass and everybody thinking he's going to be a It is officially Devontae. Actually, I think Devontae Parker's season is over. He's usually from April to May. And yeah. then once the summer actually hits, his season is over. You put the pads on, he's done. He's done. He looks really good. He's in- such a bad football player. Did you see the tweet that I retweeted? And I was like, this is the most Devontae Parker tweet of yeah. all time. It was a guy. I don't know if he was trolling people or if that was actually a serious tweet. I didn't look into it. But he was like, you could see that Devontae Parker's lower body has really been worked on. His calves. See, I think he actually said his ass I in the tweet. I think he's actually. That has to be. Yeah, has to be trolling. Yeah. yeah, whatever. But that's like the most Devontae exactly Parker thing. like doing what you're doing. Like, this yeah. is Devontae Parker tweet. <laughs> Just to piss me off. Man, I hate Twitter so fucking much. <laughs> but speaking about Twitter, we're going to be giving away two more draft guides to the big dogs out there. And here's what you're going to have to do. One, you're obviously going to have to s- subscribe to the channel. So just scroll down a little bit, hit that thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. You're going to have to go follow these two folks on Twitter as well as the show. Oh, sweet. I'll take that. So we have animal underscore BDGE. The names will be listed on the screen already. Scott links that up. Snacks underscore BDGE. And then go follow our podcast at fade the underscore public That's that will are. enter you in. And then them two will do a giveaway. Eventually they'll look at their new followers over the next week or whatever. And, uh, randomly pick one whoever's um their favorite probably. random yeah random yeah, pick send one. me we'll, shit so <laughs> send me <laughs> shit. we'll drop the po box below so we're gonna do pray the fade we're gonna go over some news and updates though because there's a lot there's been a lot that's happened thus far yeah i mean it's it's basically like the grim reaper has just come to training camp he's Ham, just, nobody's hamstrings are safe he's just killing everybody nobody's life is safe Nobody's life is I'm I waiting mean, for the first death. Golden Tate death. tries to have a kid and he gets suspended. <laughs> I <laughs> honestly it. think that he's going to be okay, though. No, I don't think so. You don't think they're going to let no, him pass? They're like, strict with that. It's they, not sympathy. It's just like you do it and you, you're facing the They have a strict thing like you have to know what you put in your body. Yeah. And his statement said, I guess we'll just jump right into that because it's, I'm sorry we started. Yeah, go for it. But he, he said in his statement that he notified the NFL right away and stopped taking it. Yeah. But after, so that's yeah. probably the only leg he has to stand well, so on. Thinking, like, They're he, not going to feel sorry that he got four th- games, right? Yeah, yes. It's not like he got tested and was like, oh, shit, by the way, I'm taking this. He's like, hey, guys, I just right. found out. Like, just this. to let you know, I had no idea. And then they were like, what? They had this test him. Just because his, his sperm isn't good enough to produce the baby, he has to use something else. If well, he, he hasn't let been them, a giant that long. If, you know? he let them know, <laughs> <laughs> if he let them know right away, I could maybe they reduce it to two. I don't think I would it say goes if anything, it goes down to three. Yeah, they have a pretty strict tolerance with that kind of shit but so. my thing is if Tariq Hill isn't gonna get suspended one game I love the statements afterwards man I love the player statements after they get fucking tested uh, positive well, this, uh, friend of the show Taylor Lewan my name's Taylor Lewan I'm the left tackle for the Tennessee Titans and I'm making this video so it comes from me and from nobody else and it doesn't leave anything up for interpretation I received a letter from the NFL a few weeks ago saying that I failed a drug test for Austin 
I want everybody to know that I've never taken the supplement knowingly, and I've never cheated the game, and I never will. Dude, he took a polygraph. He, he, yeah, he, yeah, but I mean, but a lot of this is a lot of. This I like is how trash. he actually went. How out far and would you go it. if you got te- if you tested positive for like steroids in the NFL or the ML, whatever? If you're in a sport, like what would your go? Would you just be like, "Fuck"? Am I? I, I fucked up. Am I? Have I been in the league a while? Have I accumulated a lot of money? Well, I mean, am I knowingly doing it? Let's say you're like in Taylor Lewan or Golden Tate's. I'd uh, say the four games spot. Though. I'm comfortable. Dude, Why I like, to be honest with you, you really believe most of these guys when they go all the way out of their way to say, I had no idea what, what no, I was putting they're just in my trying body. To, they're just trying to say I would say, they're, listen, there's probably like 5% Some. of people who have pure intention. Like Golden Tate's actually sounds like it might be been, And he's a good dude. He's never done anything wrong. He's right. Been so I understand citizen. that. But the most of them are just like, no, this is it. And they go to extreme measures Stretch. to make sure you know that they're Stretch. not bad people and shit. Like, well, like a lot of stuff they say, like there's there there are products that you can buy at like a nutrition zone, any one of those places. That has stuff in it that they have no idea. What's they have in no it. idea. And the list, I used to take tons. The list of, of stuff that the NFL doesn't let you put in your body is it's like bigger than the Bible. Yeah, it was so huge. but you, they're fucking NFL players. There's got to be so many oh, specialty guys who, of like course. the Ray Donovans, who you could just call up and be like, right. "Can I put this into my body?" Mm-hmm. Someone has to know that. It's, by this it's, point. Uh, there's got to be somebody who who you can hit Control F and search on there. Like, can I put? What this can in? I not put? Yeah, exactly. So well, they, you would think they would get the like take it to a lab and get it tested. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Like I have no sympathy for these guys, and they need to cut the bullshit and all the fucking excuses and be like, "Listen, I cheated. Whatever. It's a fucking NFL. These guys are six foot four trying to fucking take my head off." Yeah, I, I listen. I think everyone should be allowed to take steroids. Me <laughs> so. yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. From, Le- from level sports pl- to recreation, level play, level especially play, yeah. especially sports. Starting in high school. Yeah, fine. Yeah. Well, elementary, school. elementary. School, I used to get maybe. tested for roids back in my day. Yeah, I mean, you used to get pulled out of practice quite yeah, often. A lot. Yeah, you only tested positive twice. That's it. You should get back on them. I probably You're lagging will. a little bit. I probably will. Yeah, so I know. Looking my neck does look like a vagina. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's talk about some real shit. No one really cares about the G-Man wide receiver group right now. Most of them are not fantasy relevant. Let's talk about the Oritic <laughs> getting <laughs> cut. Now, hallelujah. We had talked about how this was a, a very distinct possibility. It just didn't really make sense, like the Oritic being in that offense anymore. They were just using him at such an inefficient fucking rate. Like, okay, let's toss it off to him and get four four yards per reception when you have a guy like Carry On who's carry a savage. On. Carry On is a savage in the passing game, right? And all the reports, we've, we've seen multiple reports from multiple beat reporters saying that they think Carry On is going to catch upwards of 50 or 60 passes this year. What does this do for you? Because I was someone who was already high on, on Carry On, right? He was, I was looking at my best ball ownership in draft.com. He was, he's my most owned running back in all of the drafts I've done so far. So I was snagging him at the end of third rounds, like religiously all off season. So Theo getting cut, Yes, it moved him up a little bit for me. Only a little bit for me. That's it. Only a little bit because I already thought he was going to get like four or five targets a yeah. game, and it wasn't like Theo was taking groundwork. Carry on. My concern is 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 the same prior to the Theo thing and after. Yeah, it's can just, he be the workhorse right, bell cow guy? Right. We only saw him. He dealt with some injuries in college too, so it's like we haven't seen him hold up for more than really like five or six games yeah. as a workhorse. So the injury concern is a little bit. There, there, um, as well as just being in a Detroit offense, because which is just anemic, yeah. and you can never trust anything in it. Yeah, so it's he's still definitely a little bit of a, uh, a risk for me, but in the third round, I think he's a pretty damn good pick. Where, uh, what are you guys' thoughts on carry on? Well, so I mean, I, I put out my uh, my running back rankings like a week or two ago on Twitter, and I had carry on. He was not on my top fifteen. I had him at sixteen. Okay. So now, if I was to redo that, is he an RB one for you now? Top twelve. No, he's no. probably like RB14. He's borderline for me. I think like, I probably have him at right 13 there. or 14. It's the only thing holding he's me back the is the fact that it is if he's the not, Lions offense. And I think the defense is the focus of that team. Yeah, in the 12, if he's not if he's not top 12, then he's 13. Like that team's going to play good defense and try and win games like 21-17. Yeah, They're not going to be blowing people out. Right. 30, you know, it's it's, an, old, it's an old school It's an old school philosophy team, mm-hmm. and I think that if he can hold up, then yeah, he's definitely got the potential to reach it. But him holding up and in that offense, both two things are very worrisome. So... I'm wondering if though, like his reception totals can really, like blow us out of the water. Like, what if he ends up with 75 catches? He's going to be a great fucking value. I mean, fantasy. he's got the potential. Even to if do he only it. carries the ball 200 the times, right? right. 210 he's got times. The potential to do it. Exactly. And Stafford's proven to be a guy who likes those like short dump off. He's those loved Theo Riddick his whole career. Theo Riddick, Golden Tate, Golden we already talked about. Yeah. So it's like, what if on just by volume, even if you know he's not like that great in terms of an explosive playmaker, ends up with like 80 Gets targets? Gets you those catches, yeah. Yeah, that would be big. So I, I still think there's some injury risk there. If you're in dynasty leagues, Ty Johnson is a good pickup. He's someone who came out this year from Maryland, a really good uh, athlete. If you look up his measurables and his metrics and things like that, he's a deeper stash for sure. And they just they have a lot of heads there. None of that I'm actually concerned about. You know, cutting into carry on. Yeah, that's up. another thing. There's nobody there that that worries me at all. It's just it, it's him himself yeah. and the offensive system he's in. So Zach Zander season, baby. Stop. You know, you never know. 
No, you, I already do know, and it's not. It's, it's not that. Season. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I definitely don't. Uh, he's gonna. I could. I worry about him taking like goal line carries though. Him not getting them? No, I, like I worry about Zach Zenner coming in taking those goal yeah. line carries. Him or CJ? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I could he, see that's, that. That's CJ too. I'm not really worried about CJ just because I think he's just too old now. He's just like fat, and they might just give him the goal line that carries. Yeah, that was so fucking. Yeah, I know, but that, <laughs> he's a but monster. He in the came playoffs. in like halfway through the season. I don't think he could do a whole season. You know? He doesn't have. To he do never. He couldn't do it with the Broncos when he was healthy. He just has to play like ten snaps a game. Yeah, that'll be big. We'll see. Um, so carry on still probably a third rounder for me if he starts dipping into the second round which i think is realistic if you're in a 12 team league he'll probably start going in the 20 to 24 range right mm-hmm. i think yeah, guys will start targeting I, I would there. Assume. and depending uh, on league format too yeah, yeah especially so. if you're in like a keeper league some I, guys i'd are likely be out on carry on in the second round but i'm all in on him in the third round let's talk about another popular third round pick prior to the news that just came out of aj green he tore some ligaments in his foot this was the opposite foot that he was coming off of the injury from last year where he had the significant turf toe which led to surgery Put him out for a while. If you guys have been watching us throughout the summer, we have told you for months now to proceed with great caution on AJ Green. The foot injury was always serious. Yes, it was a different foot. But guys, when you're coming back from these significant injuries, the biggest type of injuries that you end up suffering are compensation injuries because you're not at 100% on whatever that initial injury was. Thus, you compensate on other parts. I have no idea if that was actually related. It just goes to show AJ Green has missed significant time over the last four or five years with lower leg injuries. So at this point, you know, they said six to eight weeks. Whenever there's a timetable that long in the future, you could, it's usually on the- means nothing. Means nothing. It's like sometime later. That just means it's going to be a long recovery. That's all that means. That shit's going to be season long. Six to eight weeks is like 100%. Everything goes perfectly right. He heals. Okay. Games games appeared this year. Eight and a half over under. AJ Green. I'm going under. I'm going under too. Under. Not even close. I don't think think he gets on the field until probably week three. And then he's, I think he's going to re-injure his foot again. Oh. He's going to re-injure his foot and miss time with other injuries and shit. So AJ Green, as far as I'm concerned, is basically off my draft board yeah i'm not touching him uh, i was skeptical uh, my next was, this even happened. i was just gonna say over under how many drafts do i draft aj green in and probably i would say all would, of them for you I would, <laughs> I would put it at a half like i'm literally not going to touch him unless he probably falls into the double digit rounds right exactly that's what i'm you saying you have mean? to be in the 10th because at like that point round. then then you could stash sure him it's like put but there's going to be some idiot every league that will take him in like the fourth fifth oh, round. i can't wait to see okay so let's talk about tyler boyd i know like i'm a huge fan of boyd as a player where do you guys, before we even get into like the breakdowns, how do you guys feel about Tyler Boyd? Are you like throwing up right now? Is that your feelings about Tyler Boyd? I was gum. I forgot I was chewing gum. You're not a fan of Tyler Boyd, right? I just don't think he's a one, number one receiver. Okay. I don't think he's a wide receiver one. Snacks? Uh, I mean, I like Tyler Boyd, but I. You're not in love with him? I'm not in love with him. I think more, not so much his talent, it's more so the situation he's oh, in. Oh, for sure. The Bengals are just. That, like, that, is, that is looking more and more bleak by the day with the, the offensive line injuries and yeah. the quarterback play, new system. I like Boyd, don't get me wrong. Like I will I will be happy with Boyd as a as a two in on my team, but I'm not I'm, I don't I don't love him. I will be targeting Boyd very heavily in drafts this summer. I already know that because I think that AJ Green is gonna miss significant time. And I know everybody just fucking takes a lazy analysis. And they're looking at the uh, they, splits. they look at the road of his game split and they don't take any fucking context. They don't see that half of those were with Jeff Jeff Driscoll. Yeah. There was three games with Andy Dalton and maybe the um, actual efficiency wasn't off the charts, but Boyd averaged over 70 receiving yards in those three games yeah. per game. Pace that out to a full 16. I don't know. That's over. That's like 1,100 receiving yards. Mm-hmm. Um, and he had a fucking 31% target share on yeah. the team in those three games. No, absolutely. He averaged almost 15 points, fantasy points a game with Green on the field. So right. him, Green coming off the field is not going to affect any of that. And that's not like my point either. It's just, I there's just... That whole Bengals yeah. outlook of that team is just is scaring me right that now. That makes sense. Oh, we'll see in the in, yep. in the preseason and whatnot. As, as for that, along, yeah, but. for this AJ Green injury though, this moves Boyd up into that like he was someone that was more of a sixth round, seventh round pick for me. Maybe in that like uh, maybe above Christian Kirk in that area, but he jumps up into that mid fifth round uh, where you're looking at guys like Calvin Ridley, DJ Moore, you know, um, yeah, Cooper Cup. Would you actually healthy. take him over like a Calvin Ridley? Yeah, I think I would. Really? So I, I, I really Boyd like Boyd. Well, I with re- the, with, with My biggest yeah. thing is Andy Dalton hasn't been able to have a healthy season either. So Andy Dalton true? goes down. Now Boyd is... The yeah, next. no, you're. I, that might be if, like, he, you know, he's he's back to being the boy that everyone's looking at on Rotoviz. No, you're right. You're right. But I mean, Andy Dalton played the full sixteen the two seasons prior. Right. I'm not really yeah, worried yeah, about yeah, him. That's anymore. more but like lately, lately, and, it's, been, and, and it's, a, it's a hand issue. issue. So it's something that you know, as a quarterback, is his right hand, is his thumb. I don't, I don't really know. To it be was honest, I don't know much about the injury. Pretty sure it was his right thumb. Right off the rip, I can't tell you. If it was I think he's fine. I'm not worried about Andy Dalton. No, he's fine now. But you know, I am, I am, I am concerned about the offense overall. But like. 
he's in a situation where it might be a perfect storm. I'm not saying like I want Tyler Boyd everywhere and to own him in dynasty leagues, which I yeah. do because he's super young and he just got that new four year, $44 million contract tells you that they very much value Tyler Boyd. And that was one of the smartest things the Bengals have done. 100%. Ever. And I, I, yeah, if they had given, imagine they gave AJ Green a fucking extension and then he has a foot injury. I'm like, Oh my God. I think he, I, I know. I yeah. think he just got one like two years ago. Maybe it was. No, yeah, I, could be but he, he, I know he wanted like a new one this, this off season. Uh, he's done. Yeah. He, he's like, he's an now old he 30. Years and old. I said in a video, like two or three days ago, prior to Green's injury that it wouldn't surprise me whatsoever if Green was dealt uh, this season, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Like this, the we Bengals thought, start off. Yeah, two we and, said he's going to go to the Patriots or something. Yeah, yeah. The Bengals start off two and five or something, and then Green goes to a contender. I, I hate, you know, bringing the Giants up, but I was telling my brother, I'm like, why not try and trade for A.J. Green? When Tate got suspended, Shepard got hurt. Wait, uh, what do you, what do why you not give up trade for him? The, the third round pick or something. The, the oh. Bengals, you're not going to get, you were not going to get a first or a second round pick for him. No, you I give up a third. I wouldn't. If, I, I pro- if it's I my probably, team, I don't want The Giants it, yeah. have two. That's why I said it. I'd okay. give him a fifth. I'm just saying, in compensation, you could probably get a little bit more from the Giants because they're still depleted. So I was thinking like, AJ Green's a guy, okay, I'll take a chance on him. He was an all pro wide receiver just a few years ago. If he could stay healthy, he's, he could play. Yeah. <laughs> Please. I wouldn't give up. A 24th round pick. You don't <laughs> yeah, even have 24th round more. picks. <laughs> so with Boyd, yeah, like I'm higher than you guys are, and I just think that he's going to command so much volume. And he's yeah, not, he's not like, like I know you said he can't be a wide receiver one, but if you just look at, I mean, that that was said about Juju, that was said about fucking Adam Thielen, that Thielen, was said about yeah. all these tall slot receivers that command volume, yeah. but are also good playmakers. And yeah. Boyd had, Boyd was a guy that, it wasn't like he slowly killed you over the season where he was like five or 70, five or 70, five or 70. And the stats piled up. He had multiple games where he was going off like games, right, 120, yeah. 140 and yards I, and stuff. I, I think like my point of view, it's not a testament to, to mm-hmm. Boyd himself. It's just, you just I, think I the need, ceiling is capped overall because he's in the Bengals offense. Right. And I'm very, very weary of, yeah. of what he can do in that. I just like where you can get him right now is like the floor that you're going to be able to get with like uh, as your wide receiver three or flex play is just phenomenal with Fair. Boyd. You know what I mean? But Fair he point. will eventually move up into the fifth or so round. I hope people keep thinking that A.J. Green is going to be a good draft pick because you could take him all fucking day. Please I'm telling you him. right now, don't fucking touch A.J. Green unless yeah. he falls to a ridiculous value in your draft. Yeah, literally like double digit. Just stay yeah. away. There's no value. Yep, there's no value you're whatsoever. Guy, you don't even know when he's going to be back. Yeah, that's just oh, it's not God, worth it. So if dumb. he ever comes back, he might yeah. just retire. Damn, honestly, he should at this point. He might. Let's talk about Damian Williams. Damian Williams' hamstring injury for the Chiefs. At this point, I'm not overly concerned about him, but if we hear a couple more weeks that he's not feeling any better or it's a grade two, then at that point, I'd probably step back. We know he's been in the league for several years, and he hasn't really showed up much. He's he's had concussion histories. He's had other stuff. So. You guys got to be careful with him. I know he's in a potent offense. He did really well later in the season last year. But he is one injury away from Carlos Hyde and Darwin uh, Thompson being relevant. Very relevant. He's apparently dead, according to our show sheet. Dead. Is it Hyde season? Multiple question marks. God. Damian Williams suffered a hamstring injury. I believe it was two days ago in practice. He's I'm not celebrating that. He's not like... practicing, obviously. Um, so, you know, we talked to Dr. Morse a lot. And he always talks about hamstring injuries. They occur at a very high rate in the beginning of training camp and in the beginning of the season because players aren't able to put themselves at NFL speed, you know, throughout the off season until you get on the field. And that's where yeah, they got to like acclimate the body. You know, like when you go to Mount Everest, you got to acclimate, you got to acclimate your body. You've been there a couple of times. I'm, I'm impressed. Yeah. I don't, uh, I don't, I don't necessarily believe you. <sighs> you shouldn't. I need some, yeah, I was about to say Snapchat or it didn't happen. You bitch. <laughs> yeah, it didn't happen. Damien, <laughs> Damien Williams, hamstring injury goes into the tent. I'm assuming he'll be sidelined for the next two to three weeks. It is July 29th when we're filming this, so there is plenty of time before the regular season starts. My concern will jump in if I want I want to first see them sit him for three weeks. I want that, and then I want to That's see awesome. multiple full practices. I want to see at least three full practices strung together. This is a what? Before you'll start him? Before I'm, before I'm, he's back like on my back draft on board, train. anywhere near right. you know third, fourth round right. where he's going right now. If they start putting him back on the practice field like next week, I'm going to be completely concerned with that um if we're heading towards the beginning of the season and he's still like limited at practice i'm going to be extremely concerned with that what does this do for damien williams for you guys i mean i was already low on him mm-hmm. and now i don't i'm not even gonna touch him just because he's missing all of training camp yeah so even if he comes back healthy and he's fine he's ready to go he's not ready you know like with the team he doesn't have that chemistry he doesn't have the you know the reps he isn't there's a lot of stuff that he needs to have ready just before being healthy it just seems like they're so bought into him though like you know this was an important important training camp preseason for him this this to was be, to be derailed by a hamstring injury that i still think no he's the guy when he comes back oh uh, yeah i think so too but 
can you rely on him all season? If he tweaks that again, no. that could be a three. That was the thing. Three to four weeks thing. Exactly. I'd started a thread on Twitter, and you know, someone had said, uh, "I know exactly what's going to happen with Damian Williams. He's going to go nuts for seven or eight weeks, and then he's going to get hurt." And I said, I quote tweeted it, and I said, "Listen, if you were someone who faded Damian Williams, I think you won that argument." So, so he goes off, you know, RB one for the first seven or eight weeks, but you faded him because you know there's a lot of uncertainty around it. I think you win that argument if he goes down week eight because. Part of the uncertainty with drafting a guy like Damian Williams, having never seen him hold up for a full workload, is the fact that, you know, maybe his body can't take that. So right. that's factored into me, you know, like, like us to. saying stuff like that, you know? So people who are like... Say, like, there's reasons he didn't start in Miami. Like, there's reasons he didn't start before this. Yeah. He's never held a full workload, so to see him, you know, deal with injuries already is... It's part of why people were avoiding him or... He's been yeah. in the NFL for five years, right? This will be his... It's his fifth season? This will be his sixth season, I yeah. believe. Yeah, and I think... La- what wasn't... What was last year? I don't have it in front of me. Was it thirty percent? Was like his total, like career, like yardage came from last year? Like thirty percent? Probably at least. Yeah. Yeah. And, and like that, he, that he had fifty regular end season of, carries. It was the first years time ago in, in the Miami's backfield. But yeah, couple games last year. That's it. I know. Okay, so what does this do? You know what I, lo- I love about the best ball drafts right now is like I'm in a lot of them. So whenever I'm up, it'll be like the eleventh, twelfth round. And as soon as these RB injuries happen, I just start nailing. Like, I've been grabbing Carlos Hyde in the 11th, 12th round now. I've been nailing Justin Jackson in the 11th, 12th round now because eventually their ADPs will go up. Um, does this make you – like, I, I wasn't going to draft Carlos Hyde before the season started as, like, a handcuff or anything. But with this – was. With the, I know you were. Like, he was, like, a middle-round pick for you at this point. <laughs> he might have been RB1. I was going to say, is animal. he going to – I've been taking him, like, 8th, 7th, 8th round in best ball. Does this move him up to is, – is he probably going to be your second-round pick in E-Town Countdown this year? The one that he doesn't have. <laughs> <I> had one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, so, like, Snacks, I know you aren't going to draft Carlos Hyde. No, I it, never does this was make going you, to. Does no. this make you more <laughs> – No, <laughs> I fuck – he's not good. What do you feel about – all. So, do you want any He pieces? averages 3 yards a carry. See, that's a mistake. What does this do for uh, – what does this do for the Kansas City backfield for you? Are you just avoiding the situation? Uh, like that's like it's kinda, very fluid right now. Yeah, like you can't very, just avoid it because fluid. it's going to put up so many fantasy no, points. No, of course not. I'm actually very curious to see as training camp goes on and there's cuts made and stuff. Darwin cuts. Thompson. Yeah. Please, I hope so. No. That was a great trade on my end. You, but, got, um, you got DT? I did. Yeah. I don't even remember. There's so many fucking well, I got trades. him with, with, with Daniel Jones. Dude, my, like, can we talk about my running backs in that league? Like how they were the strong Everything's point strong. and then they just went down oh, quick. Really fucking Joe Mixon, fucking Melvin Gordon, Damian Williams. Yeah. Thank God, like, I got value at wide receiver between Julio, Julian Elman fucking hurt too. Like, yeah, who else do I have? Sammy Watkins, like, with Hillback. Dude, my team, like, I've had it went from, like, it went Stonks from, like, down. Went, Stonks yeah, fucking yeah. straight down. But that's that's the beauty team. of fantasy. By the way, I was thinking on my on my commute to your house today, to the dungeon. You your know? Two, your two-minute commute? Yeah, it's about This is probably the longest span of thinking that you do anyway. About so. a, well, literally. I can only think in <laughs> minute and a half spurts, but... um it's a good minute and a half anyway. Who do you think is going to get cut running back wise this preseason? Like from every team? Yeah, yeah. Just like your, your biggest names. Like I got one right off the rip who I think is going to get cut. Chris right? Warren. My biggest one was definitely Theo Riddick, and we saw that. And he happen. got him. What about LaShawn McCoy? Uh, that's what I was thinking. Someone about. from I think that backfield is going to get cut. I feel like they're going to trade him before they cut him. Why not put LaShawn McCoy in that Kansas City backfield? I think they're going to. I think that's a great fucking. Why the fuck? Are you kidding me? Because it'll Ooh. fucking ruin my high season. That's why. That would be fucking. I think it's a match made in heaven. That would be fun. That would be fun to watch. I don't. I, I'm not I think saying... they'll have to pay a six round price for him, too. That, yeah. Six round draft pick. I'm not saying Shady is. He's of, of the 2015. I mean, 14, they would have been better know? off doing that than re signing Damian Williams for like two years, whatever they did with him. They only gave him like $5 million, yeah. so two years. It wasn't. I'm sorry. I, I, big, could, I could see if that hamstring lingers and. That's not a bad call. Shady's on the block or gets cut. I think that's the first place he goes or he should go. Yeah, okay. he wants to probably compete, so. That'd be phenomenal. I would really like to see a little see? shady resurgence. Minute he was such a fun player in his prime he to watch. Was he was great. ridiculous. He was great. All right, so that's news and updates. That already probably took over like 45 minutes yeah, of the show. Yeah, sorry about that. Let's get into paraded or motherfudging faded. Mr. Let's Animal, go. I will let's let go. you uh, take over the shegment from here. The shmegment. All righty, all righty. All right, all right, all right. So, as everyone knows, if you've seen this before, this is paraded or faded. So, basically, I'm going to read a uh, football, fantasy football related question. And these guys are going to tell me whether they would parade it, meaning they like it, they think it could happen, or they're going to fade it, meaning, no, that shit, it ain't going to happen. Also, real quick, I want to plug a couple things. One, you're welcome to follow along the parade or fade it and, you know, list your parade or fades yeah, down comment. below as they're uh, happening. Let's Woo! do it, everybody. Time to play the game. Time to play the game. The reference. 
<laughs> you gotta spit it out, bro. Time to play the game. Got that all over. <laughs> don't hurt yourself. If you nobody knows it. that reference. Um, I don't think we need to tell people. They yeah, know. They I, know. I, I'm. I just personally be like offended. ninjas. No, like Regina George offended the girls in at that high school. I would be personally offended. All right, let's fucking play. Go All on. right, let's play. First one here, everybody. Get ready. Get ready. Here we go. Shut the fuck up, Mingo. <laughs> in week one against the Bengals, DK Metcalf will score a touchdown off a deep ball over 40 yards. Now, rate it or fade it. Okay, I'm sorry. Now, the ball has to travel 40 yards or he has to score a 40-yard touchdown? It's a 40-yard touchdown. A 40-plus yard okay. touch, yeah. touchdown. You want me to go first? Go ahead. Are you going to say yes? Yeah. The fact that you were clarifying it <laughs> means that you want to say yes. 100%. I'm going to say no. We look at Cincinnati, first of all. Seattle plays Cincinnati, right? Week one. Cincinnati yep. was one of the worst fucking rush defenses in the NFL last year. Let up almost 140 rushing yards a game. It's Seattle. They're going to carry, They're gonna fucking run the ball 35, 38 times that game. Russell Wilson's going to end the game with 24 fucking pass attempts. 12 of those targets are going to go to Tyler Lockett. Six of them are going to go to the running backs. Three of them are going to go to the tight end. DK Metcalf's going to get four or five targets that game if he's even the fucking starter by that time. I'm not banking on him scoring a fucking long touchdown out of luck. Fade the fuck out of it. Okay. Well, I'm parading it. You're a fucking moron. Let me tell you why. I hate DK Metcalf. I think this no, might be don't. his only catch of the year. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but you know what? For all his his hype and his pectoral muscles and his and whatever he's got, right? Everybody's all on that train. We weren't. We hate him. But you know what? They're gonna be blowing that team out. He's gonna get a garbage touchdown. Probably from the backup quarterback at that point. I couldn't even tell you who it is. But he's gonna score it. Week one, and he's never gonna do anything the rest of the year. I mean, it's very possible. I only that, reason, that's the only all reason I got. I, I'm, listen, I'm, go, I'm going based. I put on, this in here because of you know he's taking the reps with you know uh, the yeah, first team. He's got right. you know he's on the field for two wide receiver sets. There was one. So, there was also on uh, a Twitter. Uh, I forget who tweeted out a video. He actually ran like a decent route. Yeah, I mean, it was a go, but it was it was decent. <laughs> it was a decent straight route. Yeah, I, I'm I'm gonna take it because uh, that's that's a that's a true fake. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm paraded right as there. well because I I I could see Russell Wilson just scrambling out and just fucking chucking one bang. Yeah, he will, but it'll be to fucking Tyler Lockett. It might, or no. it could be to. DK well, they're, Metcalf. the Bengals are going to realize DK Metcalf is so bad that they're not <laughs> even going to put a defender on him. That could be the so. only reason why he gets open. All right, we differ in that one. Let us know what you think down below. Number two. Next one here, number two. George Kittle will not lead the team in receiving. Will not receiving lead the team yards in receiving yards. Parade or fade it. Snacky poo. Uh, I'm going to fade that. I have no con. I mean, I shouldn't say that because I think Dante Pettis is going to play very well, and it's a little bit different now with Jimmy G coming in. Um, but George Kittle's way too talented. He's got he's got all the momentum going for him. He's easily going to lead that team in receiving. Yeah, easily. I've faded as well. I mean, you look at Pettis. Like, I could see Pettis if Pettis goes for nine hundred or a thousand yards this year. That's a big step up. No, you consider yeah. that a breakout. Huge. But Kittle absolutely. went for fourteen hundred last year. If he regresses, like most people think, what, 1, his floor. Is higher than Pettis' ceiling, exactly. in my opinion. Maybe next year, 2020, maybe Pettis can compete right. with him. But I think the jump up from like 500, 600 receiving yards to fucking the only, 1,300. The only thing I'm saying, like, you know, George Kittle had all this chemistry with the San Francisco quarterbacks yeah. outside of Jimmy G. Yep. But Jimmy G didn't have any chemistry with Dante Pettis. So you can't say, you can't also make that correct. case. Yep. So. My, I, I was going to uh, parade it because I think that with all the, you know, the addition of, well, the, the emergence of Dante Pettis, the addition of Debo Samuel, they got, I mean, not like it matters, but there's Jordan Matthews, Jalen Hurd, Ken, Kendrick Bourne. There's all these receivers there Dude, that are going to just take one. targets. So everyone might have <laughs> like six, seven. Kendrick like the most New York giant fucking. I know. But like, time. you know, everyone might have yeah. like six, seven, eight hundred yards and like no one will really reach that thousand mark maybe so you, just because it's too spread out. So Kittle could have 800 yards and, you know, Pettis could have like 850. No you, way so your logic attention. is your logic is there's going to be made. There could be like five to six guys who have Six to eight hundred yards and well, four or five hundred yards, whatever. No, no, no. You You're don't take I mean, away. Yes, from obviously Kittle. not that many yards. King Kendrick Bourne. King, yeah, King Kendrick Bourne, Kendrick Bourne coming three, for the crown. Three hundred yards throne. this year. I like that. Just kidding. It was fucking terrible. Fade that shit. <laughs> next, next question. <laughs> next one. This is your favorite here. Kalen Balage will have more rushing yards than Kenyon Drake will have receiving yards. This parade it a, or fade it. Um, I will parade it. Kalen Blodge will have more rushing yards than Kenyon Drake has receiving yards. Realistically, I think Kenyon Drake probably ends up with about 550 to 600 receiving yards, maybe. Um, I think Kalen Balazs will take over. You know, we've heard a lot of the reports out of Miami that very Bal early report, very early that he keeps yeah. getting the first crack at it. I don't get that. Literally, has no difference it to me. Sense it's to just me. a reminder to you that this is not Kenyon Drake's 
backfield to be a feature. Which everybody workhorse. wanted it to be, which everybody thought it. Would I look be. at Kenyon Drake as more of a James White, especially with the new coaching staff there. Yeah, I think he's a more. I think he's. I mean, he's bigger. He's got more weight on. But that James. role, he's yeah, in yeah, the James White that. role, because you got the guy coming coming over from uh, right. New England. They want to run that same type of offense. Right. So Kalen Balaj is a pretty miserable runner, even dating back to college. He averaged like four and a half yards per carry at college last year. He broke away that one big run. If you take that one run away, I'm he can't make anyone miss. Pretty he's sure he was bad. average. He's a great pass catcher though, which is stupid because the role should be reversed. Doesn't make sense. Right. Kenyon Drake is a much better runner inside, mm-hmm. outside. But I think what they're going to do right is force him into that James White role. Yeah. I think Kalen Blodge will probably be the Frank Gore this year, where it's ten to twelve carries every single game. He'll have a couple breakaway runs and just the overall volume by the end of the year. You know, 160, 170 carries, even at like a four point zero yards per carry clip, is going to get him right around that like six hundred rushing 700 rushing yard mark and i think that probably eclipses Kenyon drake's numbers um, the only way i could see drake beating that out is because miami's just so bad and they use drake more because of the game script mm-hmm. that way but like did i just well, snag yeah, that from you mm-hmm. yeah but, i was gonna say maybe just josh rosen in, in, in a similar situation as last year with a bad offensive line he's just a lot of check downs that's that was my point exactly but he also didn't check down at all that, that, that's well fine. he's gonna have to this Ryan year Fitzpa- i mean fitzpatrick and josh rosen didn't i mean he would have had to last year and he didn't throw the ball day i don't think Cardinals, Fitzpat- was- Fat- fitzpatrick's not Shit checking coaching. down if there's if there's five guys covering a receiver down the field fitzpatrick's throwing the ball doesn't it, matter. Yeah. Like, it, it yeah. doesn't matter the only way i was gonna i was gonna fade it was because of kind of what you said to your last game point. script yeah. the game script they're gonna be down they're gonna be getting those garbage time points the uh, uh garbage time yards just gonna dump it off to him he may have like a hundred two two separate games where a hundred yards are same. Right off the clip, right there. That's yeah. It's kind of big, and it'll all come in the fourth quarter. Yeah, because they'll rip off like a thirty yard game or a forty five. It's something something like that. It's mm-hmm. the only way I'd fade it, but I would lean more towards praying that because rushing yards are just easier to predict coming exactly. by, especially and when you, we you kind of have more of a floor than you do. So, over I, so I'm gonna fade it just because I just don't think Balaj is a good runner. I think by like yeah. week six, he won't even be on the field. Really. I think they're going to just force this into a timeshare. I I'm, think someone else is going to eventually take that role because they, dude, ooh, they have no one on that fucking feet. On that someone team, will though. emerge. It happens all the time. I don't know, that dude. team is really bad. That's really bad. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. and so just it gives a reminder overall though to, about Kenyon Drake, man. Like people really started thinking it was a good pick in the fourth fucking round. No, it yeah, what's going to happen is for trading him. I trade that fucking. Kalen Balaj will start moving up into like the eighth, ninth round. Kenyon Drake will eventually move back to be a value, and like I'm not looking at Drake anywhere near no, but anything before the sixth round, probably like a seventh. No eighth round pick for me um but again at, it's, a, at, it's no. a running back by committee on a horrible offense guys right. like don't fucking don't just don't get it twisted stay away yeah just take anything that says mia next to it yeah meaning and dolphins. make it fucking MIA. make it mia just, just make yeah. it mia facts That's all right it. let's move on all right number four Le'Veon bell's first season with pittsburgh he averaged 15.0 fantasy points per game half ppr format Le'Veon Bell won't average more than 15.0 fantasy points per game this season. Parade it or fade it? You want to take it? Parade it. Is there a reason why, or are you just going to parade it? No, there it? is. Because <laughs> we've been saying it, I mean, all summer and even before when he signed that Adam Gase and the running backs, they don't normally click. Obviously, it's going to be um, it's going to be pretty easy to get touches for Le'Veon Bell. Yeah. The other we, thing, we can agree with that. 15 is probably the barrier you want your RB1 to get at minimum. Yeah. Right? Like, that's where you're comfortable getting it. And I wouldn't be surprised if it happens. But, you know, Gase's offense with, with the, you know, the running backs and how they, they just don't mesh well. And leave me, I, there's something about this that I just I don't trust him at all. I've been saying it the whole time. I mm-hmm. think he's going to miss time. The, the rust factor. What's being just, underplayed. Everybody's going to key on him. Just to give you guys, like, a reference, that season where he averaged 15 points. He went for he had 244 attempts, played 13 games, 860 yards, eight touchdowns. Yards per carry. That was his rookie year, I remember, and then he dropped weight for the second year, yep. and he got much more and efficient, he had, more explosive. You know, he, he had 45 receptions. So, yeah, so I was looking at some numbers, right? And I also think something that's getting very underplayed is the fact, like, we know Bell's going to be a volume guy, but Adam Gase came out fucking immediately after they signed him and was like, I didn't want to sign a running yeah. back. Like, I know you could so force a guy into now. it, but, like, if, if Bell starts playing inefficient, like, Gase will be like that. He wasn't my guy. Like His snap, I, his snap count's going to go down. Yeah, 100%. It doesn't matter how much money they're going to put. They'll cut him right after the year. I'm going to parade it there. and say he goes under 15. I think he will flirt with that number, like 14 and a half, yeah, maybe. Yeah, he's very the, close. Just on the vo- I was looking at, you know, Joe Mixon last year, right? This this is his stat line. And Joe Mixon averaged 15.9 fantasy, fantasy points per game. 1,168 rushing yards, 55 targets, 300 receiving yards, 9 total touchdowns. I think overall, you know, like 1,150 rushing, 300 receiving yards, 55 targets, 9 touchdowns. 
I think that's reasonable for what Bell can put up end of season numbers overall. Yeah. Like 1,400 total yards is, is not bad. I'd but Mixon, subtract, like, the Mixon did that in 14 season. games, though. So his points per game is higher than what Rushing. Bell will have. Right. You know, If he does that over the season, and I think that's realistic end of season numbers. I, I'm not someone who thinks that Bell is going to end the year with 90 targets. I think a lot of people no, no, no. think he's going to be so involved They're in gonna this be passing st- game. Yeah, because everybody's like, oh, the, the young quarterback, they just want to check it down to the running. Right. Don't, so, don't 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 fall and, and into if, that if, trap. Like you said, if he's not Gase's guy, I could easily see him throwing other guys in there, just giving him carries to see what he has for the future. Yeah. Like, and what's Elijah McGuire look like? Get in there, but I think Elijah McGuire is, is beyond under. I hate the Jets more he's than underrated. A lot of sure. underrated. people should hate teams. He's a very underrated player. So Gase might see that. And I really might, think Bell's you know? going to just average four point four point zero yards per carry. You know, and if he doesn't get those ninety targets, he's going to be. T- I'm going to I'm going to parade this stat because I think he's going under fifteen. I just think overall, like he's not someone I com- think he's going to be a complete bust because the volume's going to be there. Mm-hmm. But he's someone you need to fade at his ADP. Like he's not a fucking yeah. first round pick. I'm not no. touching. No, no way. Like late second, maybe we start thinking about that shit for me personally. But I, I just I, I'll think about it, and I'm still probably going to take a guy whose ADP is lower than his. Yep. Yeah. I feel more over. comfortable taking someone that's you know a few picks. Yeah. So do I. I, 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 I think Mix, I Mixon is like my RB like twelve or thirteen, but he's like a popular RB seven six for a lot of people, right. which I think is. Kind of ridiculous. Kind of crazy, yeah. All right. Let's go. Fuck Le'Veon Bell. <clears throat> fuck him. Yeah, fuck him. Number five. What season? <clears throat> After throwing 32 touchdowns last season, Drew Brees' age finally catches up to him, and he throws less than 26 and a half touchdowns in 2019. Parade it or fade it. Drew Brees is 40 years old, by the way. He throws less than 26 and a half. Yep. I'm going to fade it. I think he hits 27. I think he ends with 27. I think at the end of the day, this offense gives Breeze too high of a floor for him not to hit it. But but I will preface and say it wouldn't surprise me if he ends up with about 24, 25. Mm-hmm. I'm looking at some numbers just in terms of the trend of you know who he is and what this offense is doing, we've seen his pass attempts drop like really significantly over the last few years. 2016. He threw the ball 42 times a game in 2016. That's fucking insane. The next year, 2017, dropped down to 33 and a half. So almost 10 fewer. That's crazy. Last year was down to 32 and a half. So we're seeing this trend. And they just, you know, they don't need to throw it as much with him because they have such a good running game. That 2016 season, he had 62 pass attempts inside the 10-yard line. Most ever in a season for a quarterback. 62 pass attempts inside the 10-yard line. 2017, that dropped in half to 31 last year went a little bit back up to like 43 but the overall volume you can see is just mm-hmm. dipping you know Kamara and people don't really think of Kamara as like a goal line back but he was like second in the NFL last year yeah, goal really line good. carries mm-hmm. Tavis Murray's gonna get a ton of goal line carries um, also last year Breeze had a touchdown rate of six and a half percent which was his highest rate since 2011 um, his he average- pulled out last year yeah, efficiency wise, it was probably almost his best year of his I think, career. I think it was. Yeah, he and it fucked me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because the I mean, he was he had games where he just didn't do shit. Most mm-hmm. of the games came in you know really bad defensive matchups where it was yeah. just teams that were depleted and he put up big numbers. But over the last five years, touchdown rate was five point two percent. Again, last year six and a half. So if you go back down to that five point two percent, you look at the pass attempts that he's had over the last couple of years. His touchdown numbers are going to be closer to like twenty five than they are thirty. So it wouldn't surprise me, but I just I don't know something about Breeze. I was like I don't think he's finished yet. I think this offensive scheme is just too too good. Um, so I'll take the very very slight fade on this. I think it goes over. Yeah, I agree. I'm going to fade it too. I think he's going to be right there, be like twenty eight. He'll squeeze him in there, just short throws, bang, you know, like a ten yard slant to fucking Michael Thomas. I'm How many gonna, times is he going to do that this season? You know? Yeah, no, it's true. I'm uh I'm going to parade it. I think he lands on twenty six on the dot. Oh. So that's that's a that's a very slim parade. Um, I think Latavius Murray is an upgrade over Mark Ingram, and I, he's a great, great running back. Kamara is a great Hall running back, as we know. Nah, Hall of Fame, maybe borderline first ballot. <laughs> but um, a couple more good seasons, and we're gonna have a have a real vote on our hands. I, I meant I meant to say a, a great, great signing, but running back. Is stuck <laughs> in my I was gonna head. say like that was. <laughs> like, okay. I know. I, I didn't know, know you like him I, that he's much. He's not a great, great, but he's a very solid running back, and I think he's an upgrade over Mark Ingram. And I think the way that. Saints offense that we kind of saw was shifting more towards a run-heavy team. Obviously, they have two dynamic running backs and that'll open up the pass game a little bit more. But watching Breeze towards the end of the year, it was not. It wasn't the same Drew nah, Breeze. It was noodly. It was, was very noodly. noodly. And I think they're gonna. I think they're gonna disguise that very well with the run game when they get in the red zone. Like you said with that stat, they're gonna be running the ball instead. Yeah. So I think a few of those touchdowns are gonna be taken away by Murray and Kamara. So I'm 
I'm going to parade. I'm going to say 26. He'll probably throw like one interception to make up for the <laughs> lack of touchdowns he throws. But – that's where I go. I also like that they added Jared Cook, though, because I felt like there was a lot of times last year that, like, Ben Watson should have scored, like, four separate didn't. touchdowns and didn't. I think Jared Cook probably converts those. Very big upgrade. Yeah, so I, I think, realistically, it's just going to be so close, but we're just he trying to lay He can regress from points. last year and still be better than this. Like, exactly. So yeah. Like, he can throw, yeah. like, you know, But he also got touchdowns. off to a hot start. Like, that— yeah, didn't the, he have like a six touchdown game? Yeah, the first he, he like, got the, off to a very hot start. The and first then, ten weeks, were re- he very much declined towards the end of the year. And I'm going to go based off of the recency bias of seeing that, seeing that they bring in Murray, they add to that running game. Oh shit, we've just been proven wrong on Twitter. By what? By Le'Veon Bell just tweeted, "This is long overdue, but I want to take a moment to apologize to all the fantasy owners who picked me last year. I'm sorry I couldn't pull, pull through for y'all, but trust me, this year is about to be way different. I'm bringing the chip this year, purple." Devil face, I got to – There is no doubt. take a break. Scott, edit this out. I got to adjust my rankings. Bell, All right, top no, five. No, perfect. We're taking <laughs> a break. Top five, top five. Turn, five. Turn break. Great. No, we're not actually. No, we're not actually. Keep it rolling. Was, it was a joke. It's a bad Maybe I'm Bell. Hold on. I'm sorry. He is got to be, outside of Kyle Murray, the weirdest person in the NFL. Kyle Murray's going to be a fucking beast. He is going to be a beast. Le'Veon Bell is making everything about him. He's make, He's doing these, these – I mean, it's always been about him. Yeah. Even, but I'm saying even more out, so. You, you know? would think he'd just shut up and play football. Nah. There's something there I just don't trust at all. Stay away from Same. Le'Veon Bell. Everything in my gut is like, don't, don't, don't touch ever him. take Le'Veon Bell. Yeah. We faded him so long. I was thinking about the Dynasty League that we did, the Go Fade Me. He fell to like the end of the, yeah, was took, it the fourth round? Fourth yeah. and fifth, yeah. It took forever. Jesus Christ, yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, I remember because I was up in my third round pick and I was like talking to a few people on Twitter. I was like, yo. You know, I'm, I'm debating taking my QB1 here, but Bell's on the board. And the majority of people are like, dude, you got to grab Bell. He's a workhorse. And I was just like, in my gut, I was just like, yeah, I'll take him in a redraft, you, not in yeah. Dynasty. Yeah, yeah no it's, way. There's too much of a commitment. Yeah. All right, let's move. Number six, Odell Beckham Jr. <laughs> talks all this shit about the Giants and doesn't even finish the season with better numbers than last year. And so, you know, those numbers were 12 games, 77 receptions. 1,052 yards and six touchdowns. Parade it or fade it. He's going to go over it. He's got to go if over Odell it. If Odell escapes this summer without a hamstring pull, he's about. To, we're about to see peak OBJ, I think. Mm, I think we're I seeing think peak so. OBJ. There's too many mouths to feed. That's what so, I think. So, something's going to go Something's going to go. Go weary There's in that, too many mouths to feed. It's, it's a, it, this reminds me of uh, the, the, the Eagles going, all over they're again. They're going at Colin Coward. The they're Eagles, attacking they the dream media. Team? They're, they're yeah, 2006. Teammates. Who was the who was the OBJ of that team? OBJ is like literally the best wide receiver we've seen yeah. in a long time. Uh, talent-wise, hands down. Yeah, he's no, great. No, DeAndre Hopkins is better. Okay, <clears> but whatever. No. I just... One listen, catch. I'm, I'm worried about his health. But if he escapes the summer without like a calf pull or a hamstring pull... I really think OBJ is just going to ball the fuck out. He's going to ball. He's going to go like six for one seventy five and two the first a, week. Nick, he's a great player. No one's no one's saying that he's a great. Yeah, you guys are both player. saying he stinks, and I'm letting people know that. Who OBJ's, said he stinks? Both of you said he stinks, and I'm what? letting you guys know he's good. I've been trying to trade for him like for the past few weeks. <laughs> I didn't yeah, say yeah, he yeah. stinks. He's the hell. Of you guys better. both said he's the worst fan. F- I bet player you... of all time. <sighs> okay, go to the next. Latavius I'm, Murray or o- Odell straight up. I'm going to fade this. I think he's going to do. I think he's going to have a good season. Murray. I take Latavius Murray over over Odell. Good character guy. Yeah, I'm gonna put. The, we can put that on the town draft That's official. board right now. It's official. It's you official. heard it. It's locked in. Lock it. You in. don't get a choice with your first round pick. I'm not taking Odell Beckham ever. S- sick. I might take him. Even if he fell to the to twelfth round, I'm not taking him. It's just so dumb. <laughs> Listen, my guy, my team wins on character. Okay. That's so not true. wait, so both of you guys are fading it though. He's gonna go. Over yeah, he's gonna go. Over. Yeah, he's gonna. Go. <laughs> he's gonna go well over. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Animal. Just, just because I, of the, improve the twelve improve. games. That's why. I, I, so you should. So you should. Uh, his, his twelve game sample. That's what it's gonna be more or less. Yeah. yeah well, fine. I he's gonna do better than that. I still think. He'll, oh, how is he gonna go from Eli to fucking Baker Mayfield and not ball the fuck out? Honestly, it's, well, it's he, Eli's got the, rings that hold down his throwing arm. Everybody fucking forgets that. But does that does that affect the his concern numbers, for me? Is the the mounts to feed in that offense? You got Ninjoku. You got Chubb. You got Jarvis Landry. So they had Sterling. They had Evan Ingram. They had Barkley. Arguably just as good, if not more talented, than all those guys you just named. That was a good compliment. Yeah, but when Odell— They have great talent players. They do. Uh, yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah exactly. Maybe. When you're, the best guy, when you're a guy football. like Odell, you give him the fucking ball, and you give it yes. to him a lot. He's got yeah, to eat. He's there's got a eat. difference between trying to get it to him and getting it to him. So, well, yeah, no, he's Baker also, Mayfield's going to be able to get it to him while yeah, Eli was Baker trying Mayfield's to Baker Mayfield's like the most him. accurate quarterback in football, and he's in his second year. Yeah, this is going to be— He's going to th- throw those five-yard slants that Eli so beautifully threw 
nearly yeah, over his listen, head. I agree he's going to put him right here, and he's going to go for the 70 yards that he does. I'm telling you, Odell's but, injuries always happen early in the preseason. If he escapes this year without a fucking hammy pull in the preseason, I'm sure it's going to happen like August 13th or something. But if it doesn't, he good. We're, we're about to see. I've never rooted for an injury. Well, I always do, but All right, gets hurt. let's go. Roll Number it. seven, Aaron Rodgers threw 25 touchdowns to Jordy Nelson and Randall Cobb in 2014. In the 2019 season, he will throw more than 25 touchdowns to one of these duos, being Devonta Adams, Geronimo Allison, MVS. Any of those two combined for over 25 touchdowns. Braided or faded? Over. Over. 25 and a half. I'm going to say, you know? I'm going to parade it. I, I, I say this with as serious of a face as I can get it. I think we see Devontae Adams finish the year with 16 to 19 receiving touchdowns this year, which means whoever's the number two there. I like MVS more, but I don't care if you like Allison more. One of them will end up with eight or nine eight touchdowns to 10, this yeah. year. Yep. So, um, I'm, so you, you're banking on, on Devontae with a... I'm, I'm banking. I mean, you're going to have to debank. I don't. It's not going to be an even split. Like, it's not going to be 13 and 12. No, of, yeah, course no, I mean. of course not. Devontae, he's been top... Top three in right. uh, red zone like targets my, the last he's three my years wide receiver in a row. one this year. I think he goes for for fifteen plus. Yeah, I yeah. mean easily. That's what I, I mean. I, I think this is the Aaron. No I parade it too. This is the Aaron Rodgers revenge tour. He's going to go off this year. Yeah, yeah crazy. And, and Devonta Adams is going to be and the he's main gonna, recipient. And he's going to be the recipient of it. Yep. There's yeah. literally no downside for no. any like for Adams whatsoever. No. I want all the Packers. Who's, who's Rodgers tight end? Jimmy Graham. Jimmy the God Graham. Right. He's going to be throwing to those receivers all day long. Those guys are going to put up. Some fucking touchdowns this year, big time parade. Yeah, big yeah, no, I, yeah, same. I'm, I'm all in on. It's such a high number, but it's like we're all, yeah, we're all in on yeah. that. I, I just, I think it's too easy, actually. All right, number eight. This year's MVP comes from the NFC South. Parade it or fade it. I am parading it. I think um, if people actually listen to to us and listen to me, I'm all over this Atlanta Falcons offense this year. Good thing we didn't talk about Kevin Ridley's hamstring because I know he only tweaked it because I've been talking about him. But Matt Ryan's going to have a monster year and the Atlanta Falcons are going to win that division. So, in that case, when the when the best QB on the best team in a tough division wins, what do you think happens? They win the MVP. They, they win the MVP. MVP. The how many how many MVP. games in the dome max? Uh, 12 13? I thought it was 11, but you know what? Either way. I think it was like 11 straight. It was 11, it might be I think it was 11 overall. out of 13, something, 13 overall, whatever. something like that. Yeah. And we know that we know how much better Ryan is in the dome than outside of it. He's he's going to explode. I don't trust that running game. He's going to throw he might throw for 40 touchdowns, 7 picks, 5100. He's going to have a monster year. There's no way he can't give him the MVP. Boom, parade it. Yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm the same. I, I, I think if it's not Matt Ryan, it could be Cam Newton. Yeah, and uh, we were just saying that, like if the Panthers are good, then yeah, Cam the, listen, the, the Panthers have seriously done some work on that roster, like adding pieces to the defense and the offensive line is much healthier now. Yeah. And if Cam is Cam Newton that he was, you know, when we he was the MVP, sure that, that shoulders okay. Well, that's what I'm saying. If Cam is fully healthy and he is that same, you know, Cam Newton the dual threat. Yeah. yeah, I I don't see why he can. I'm couldn't very surprised be. that I'm going to fade this. Right. I don't think the MVP comes out of the MC South. I'm su- also surprised Drew Brees was not bought up. Considering that he finished second last year behind Mahomes. Well, I have That's him right. on the sheet. I but just think that Cam. Yeah. What is the formula, as you said, for winning ravioli, the MVP? Ravioli. 90%. Ravioli. ravioli, ravioli, be a really good team and put up a lot of the stats. Yes. So you need both of those things to happen, right? right? When I look at it, it's like I, you can narrow it down. It ain't going to be Winston because it just ain't going to be Winston. That team's yeah, going to be a shit show. Winston, no. um, 90% of the time, it's going to be quarterback. So it's either going to be, right? We're talking about Breeze, we're talking about Matt Ryan, we're talking about Cam Newton. I look at Cam, I just don't. He's. An, I. I don't see any way he puts up this uh, one. Like, the Carolina could be good. I don't think. I mean, Dude, Carolina was on I think, a roll last year until they lost like six straight. They had uh, yeah, injuries. I, I think their ceiling team. is like ten and six. Um, it's not the roof. I don't think Cam Newton is going to put up numbers big enough to actually compete for MVP type numbers. So when I look at it, it's either Ryan or Breeze. And when I look at those two, I think I can knock down one of those two points. Either too good of a team or not enough stats, you know? So with Breeze, we had talked about it. I don't think he puts up the numbers. I think the team is going to be very good. I think, you know, 11-5, 12-4. and four, So that's MVP contention for sure. But I also think when you're competing with the Patrick Mahomeses of the league, your stats are, your, your team's going to be really good. Your stats need to be fucking, woo, through the fucking mm-hmm. roof. The ceiling is the roof. With Matt Ryan, my concern is as a Falcons fan, I don't think our team is going to be that good. I think the offense, I think he might, yeah, he could lead the league in passing yards and shit. I I think that people are going to be disappointed by what our overall record is. Like, I hate Dirk. I, he's going to be so good from a statistical standpoint. I just think we're going to disappoint from a team standpoint. And if we go 9-7, and seven, 
I, th- that's not going to get it done no. wh- when you have guys no, like Rodgers, Andrew Luck, right. Mahomes, who are all going to be on very good teams as well as putting up the numbers. So the way I look at it is like it, w- it wouldn't surprise me if, if a quarterback came out of this division and won the MVP. But I think there's too many faults. There's too many uh, question marks or holes to poke through most of these arguments, in my opinion. So yep. I'll fade it. I, no, I can, I can understand that argument. You know the team better than we do. But from an outside perspective, everything just aligns up perfectly. Yeah, I'm just really high on Matt Ryan and Cam Newton this year. I'm, uh, and, uh, Cam Newton, not so much me. Like, he won the MVP when they were 15-1. and one. Yeah. Were they really 15-1? and one? Yeah. yeah. And then the Broncos beat their one. ass. So Hell yeah, they did. Yeah, they, I'm they, so they, pissed they, right now. Yeah. Yeah. But Cam was that year was fucking weird because Cam was such a good passer that year. Yeah, yeah. Every other year he's been horrible throwing. Great. I remember watching that Giants game. Remember when Odell and Norman went at it? Yeah, Cam was unbelievable. I was like, yeah. how the fuck does Cam Newton Cam Newton know how to throw the ball? I didn't know he knew how to do that. But I think it just comes down to a preference. I really see Atlanta winning that division this year because yeah, maybe not winning, but I I see him winning eleven games. If they don't win the division, mm-hmm. that means New Orleans won twelve. And I can easily see 12 and 11 with Ryan stats being far superior, matching kind of a Mahomes type, blowing Drew Brees out of the water. And then, yeah, I think you can give him the MVP title that way. So Imagine Matt Ryan winning two MVP awards. Unbelievable. That would be, that would be something. Matt Ryan's a great fucking quarterback. Yeah. I, mean, I ain't complaining. He, but he's, had his, he's got his demons. We know that. He's definitely had some down points in his career. Yes. We'll end it with that. Number nine, Mark Andrews. Paid it. Has a breakout season, over 900 yards, and eight touchdowns. One word. Lamar Jackson. Parade it or fade it. That's it. Next. Fade it. I mean, listen. They're <laughs> going to be on. one of the most run-heavy teams in the NFL yeah. this year. Uh, He's not yeah, get have the you fu- seen Andrew the reports? Andrews, the Andrews training was low-key reports? fucking fantastic last year. Yeah. And, you know, I dove in, looked at some of his numbers. 552 receiving yards last year. Ninth highest rookie total for a tight end since 1990. So that's almost 30 years. Ninth highest rookie receiving yards total. However, the jump from 552 to 900 is massive. And last year, they really had nothing at their receiving. Well, he's going to have to break court. out. That's now it's point. Hollywood Brown. Now it's Miles Boykin, Justice Hill out of the backfield. I'm going to fade it. I still like Mark Andrews a lot, but he's more of like a streamer with um, with week-to-week upside yeah. than he is someone that I, that I think is going to end with fucking right. 900 yards. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm yeah, the, I, 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 I could see the eight touchdowns. But uh, 900 yards is tough. Yeah. Uh, Just I, with Lamar Jackson, that offense. I can't trust Lamar Jackson throwing the ball over 14 times a game. Yeah, it's fucked up. How is he going to get to Yeah, I saw like yards? a tweet. It was like a Take the good, over. good day at Camp Tay. Lamar Jackson, couple of picks. And uh, <laughs> I was like, wait, a couple of picks? There was also a video on Instagram where like, I forget who it was. It was Ravens Camp. Lamar Jackson was throwing the ball. And the guys clearly got him beat. And he like kind of threw up behind him, mm-hmm. and it's like we can get used to seeing this from Lamar Jackson. If he leads him, it's a touchdown. But he, he mm-hmm. let it here, and he fell down catching it. Are you kidding me? The guy can't throw the football. Yeah, yeah, he he can't. Can. But there was a report that came out today. That someone asked John Harbaugh about uh, Lamar Jackson's rushing. Yeah. Yeah. It's like whatever his rushing attempt total is, take the over yeah. on it. Mm-hmm. So it's like they're gonna run the ball a lot, dude. I, I I love Lamar Jackson in one quarterback leagues. I don't really play in them, but if you do, I think Lamar Jackson is the easiest fucking take because if he he's gonna he's gonna be the first quarterback since Vic to go over a thousand rushing yards. Yeah, e- easy. Too. Once he gets easy. hurt, if and when he gets hurt, yeah, I'm thinking like an RG three rookie season type of year. Exactly, like fucking. Yeah. I mean, he's definitely a better passer in, in that sense. But yeah, but like the rushing number, he's gonna give you a floor of fifty. Who's fantasy best wise? RG three. Oh, yeah. At that, during his rookie season. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 Lamar Jackson is right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He just stay healthy. Yeah, yeah. Just playing right. injuries. So let's uh, let's fade Mark Andrews. I would say if we put it at. Yeah, where would you have to put well, this he, to make well, it so see, you would see. trade it? What did he get? Like he had five fifty two last year. Five fifty two last year, right? I would what say if you put it at half a Flacco seven hundred six fifty seven hundred. I would go over. It's not like a huge breakout season. Yeah, I don't think he's gonna have a huge breakout season. They can't have breakout years with a quarterback that doesn't throw the football. Yeah. Doesn't throw it in the offensive system and doesn't throw it accurately. Andrews would have to account for like thirty five percent of their receiving yards. See, I would love to, to see Andrews on on a Ooh. on a team Ooh. that could throw the ball. Imagine the fucking Saints drafted Mark Andrews or something. Mm. Oof. That would be fantastic. But yeah, yeah. it's too hard with Lamar Jackson there. Yeah. So fade. No problem. Last what? one, number ten. Mr. Theo Riddick had eight hundred and twenty eight receiving yards combined between the last two seasons. Carry on Johnson will top that number in 2019 season. And just for a reference, uh, Christian McCaffrey had 867 receiving yards in 2018. Prated or faded? Let me you hit think? you with some other historical big facts. Okay, let's hear it. Christian McCaffrey, that 867 receiving yards. Good ball player. 11th highest receiving total for running back since 1970. Damn. The average of those 11 backs, 
finished the season with 88 receptions. Whoa. So in order for him to touch that number or go above, is KJ going to catch upwards balls. of 80, 85, 90 passes? I we had talked so. about this. Do I think he's going to be heavily involved in the receiving game? Yes. I think that's probably more around the 60 to 65 mark. We'd be happy with that. Very. You'd have to. Oh, as, yeah. as, a, as a fantasy running back, you, you would fall in love with that. Uh, I don't think he's going to come close to 85. As I said, you never know. Maybe he'll surprise us, but I think – Getting close to Christian McCaffrey's numbers or whatever it was, the Aritics combined. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go it's unreasonable. The big fade on that. Yep, I'm going fade too. Yeah, I don't see him. I think it's just too many receiving yards. Yeah, it's a I lot. could see him with like the 650 at the most. We were talking about him in the beginning. Like in the, we, I think that even that's a lot. Right. Yeah. If we like, were talking about him in the beginning. We don't we don't trust. What if these starts off? It's just bad. Right. That's yeah. Just, exactly. That's what we're saying. We don't trust yeah. that offense exactly. We don't trust him being able to carry a full workload. So. What They're going to try to run games. the ball a lot. He's done right there. A lot no, of clock. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's an easy fade for me. Yeah, you're a piece of shit. Love carry on, but easy fade. How about this? Carry on Johnson, Le'Veon Bell. Who has more receiving yards? Oh, good one. I'm going to go Bell. Uh, I'm going to go carry on. Ooh. <sighs> Fuck. I actually didn't even think about it before I asked the question. <laughs> I, well, uh, yeah, I didn't have much time to think either. But I'm, I'm going to go, go with Bell. You. I'm going to go with Bell I know, as well. I know what I, I I think it might He's be. Done it before. I think it might be like four fifty and four thirty or something like that. Bell Fair. and Carry on Johnson like that. Um, that's all the questions we got for today. That's our parade it or fade it segment. Oh. Next week we will uh, we'll have another herd of goats, right? Yes, yes, yeah, we, we should, will. We should. We'll we get back it. into the herd. So wh- what we're doing next week on herd of goats is your favorite drunk munchies. That's like what's your favorite fantastic. drunk food? Yeah, so that is our, 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 our. We'll just go munchy food overall. Whether munchy food, whatever fine. your fucking sin of choice is. Yeah, you're if high, you don't like drinking, drunk, you like smoking reefer. Boom. Boom. I'm sure, I'm sure there's going to be some good snacks. Munchies. Ooh, Oreo cakes. Or snacks. Go. This this is my shit. This is a big okay? one I'm coming to play. Really well Let's read. do the comments. Also, remember, <laughs> two <laughs> draft guides. Yeah, it's, it's two draft guides being given away. So make sure immediately after you finish this, immediately after you hit that thumbs up and subscribe to the channel, you go follow these two cunts. Assholes. Ooh, nice. That was a nice like cunt asshole yep. combination right there. Yep. That's what we bring to you in that's value. The best combination. We should do it not random. We should do it like who sucks up to us the most. Like wow, snacks, your hair, it's beautiful, so red today. and beautiful, vibrant, that white, voluminous, that white, vibrant skin makes you makes Casper not look like anything. That, that any really sense. make you feel good. I don't even think that makes sense. Listen, if somebody tries to compliment me, it's gonna make me feel good. Okay. Even if it's not a real compliment. Even if it's not a real compliment. <laughs> all right. I need all the compliments I can get nowadays. So boys. give Snacks I'm, some I'm compliments struggling. too. He's Follow uh, them. You'll be entered into when draft guys. Yes. Let's, let's talk about some of the comments that we were left on our last video. <laughs>、Uh, Alrighty. We, we, we were laughing at this one. Yeah. So this one, it's just a great interaction. It's, it's amazing. I, I love the whole thing. So、uh, try hard comments. Kind of hard to watch with a fucking baby crying in the back. <laughs> And this was from last week's episode when there was, in fact, a baby crying. For literally for... the small. So, and、amount. Snacks comments back. That was literally like <laughs> 10 seconds of the、comments. show. <laughs> and Shut then, the fuck up. <laughs> <Yeah> . <laughs> I love this interaction. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Tryer just comes, fires right back. Shut the fuck up. Tryer, you <laughs> There's fucking, nothing else after that. I literally thought it was 10 seconds of the show.、Uh, He says nothing else after that. I don't care if it's 10 seconds or if it's one second、yeah. or if it's a minute. I don't want to hear it. He just says, shut the fuck up. That's a great response. I'm debating、man. whether or not I want to fucking give this guy a free I think he、guys. should. No, I'm not going to do it, but that's a funny ass comment. I, I'm crying. I'm crying. I'm crying laughing. I read shut it, the I fuck up. That's so good. Go.、Oh, uh, Daniel McKinnon. Danny Nick, Football, our man. Blew a 9 4 lead. He did. Crazy. It's just the fucking ongoing theme of my life. Oh, Every, by the way, everything I love and care about just blows leads. Yeah, blows big leads. You know what? I, I was that, that wasn't on you though. That was that was the team. Hundred percent. Yeah, I didn't bring my A game, but like wasn't there were a lot of people、either. that brought、It's、their、like、fucking Falcons coaching staff and then Nick's、yeah. team. Next question. On, next、yep. comment. I'm only here. Ryan Devins. Snacks is my spirit animal. Great episode, fellas.、Oh, I feel bad for you. That's horrible. I feel bad for you. If snacks is your spirit animal. That's what that's what it's come to. I actually want to know, Ryan. Like, what what makes you think that? Like why? Why is he your spirit animal? Because I'm fun. I'm interactive. I'm passionate. I'll give you I'm that. Good, I'm good looking. You're interactive. Stop. Stop. I, yeah, I really what the fuck do you even mean by that? Well, me and Ryan talk all the time. He, yeah.、Never. Yeah. Ryan's one of the.、You're, Ryan's a good dude. He's one of the big dogs. He's fucking faithful. Big, yeah. He's、sure. a good dude. Ryan, thank you, buddy. All right. All right.、Uh, Niha, honorable mention. This was for our herd of goats. This is a good one. I like this. Waking up Saturday morning and turning on world,、yeah. College Game Day. 
Yeah. I'm not really that into college football. So I'm, neither I'm, am I, but I will. I, I'm not like, you know, I'm, I'm going to be more into I it now. I just got into year. it like last season. So I will be more into it now because I'm a lot more into like doing rookie and dynasty analysis. Right. So you have to be. So you I'm excited to, to actually watch yeah. a lot of these running. But I will football. say like, there's nothing better. College football is on from 12 o'clock to 12 at night. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. awesome. Just waking up on Sunday during football season is a the yeah, really no, fucking the good. You know what I love that we didn't, you know, we didn't do it last week. I didn't say it, but, uh. The London games, waking up at like I 9 a.m. Oh, I, I fucking love it. No. Just no. wake up, wipe the crust out of my eyes yeah, and watch I drink, football. I, I always do mimosas Amazing. for them. Like I drink like 44 mimosas before a game kicks off, but those games are always so bad. What time do you dr- wake up to drink 44 before a 9 a.m. game? Well, they're usually... You guys at, ever been on... Sorry, go. They're usually at 9.30. I, I wake up like 8.15, drink 44. 44 and 44 yeah. minutes? Yeah. It's pretty good pace. You guys ever been on the West Coast for a football season? No. For no. an extended period? Uh, no. No. When I, I you when said I, when you were in San Diego, I was in Cal, right? I was in Cali, but it was it was yeah. Uh, when I stayed in Cali for a couple of months, um, there was during football season. Holy shit, they have it good, man. See, I feel like I would yeah, like it, but I would also like miss like the night games. No, you, dude. I mean, it's Sunday, so everyone's like feeling shitty from the weekend, and by six o'clock or seven o'clock rolling around, you're like, oh, thank I'm God, I'm very go to much, sleep. I'm very much in between on that argument because I love nothing more than the feel of Sunday night football and that like theme song yeah. at eight uh, thirty. I don't know, know how I feel about it at like dinner time. Like, I, like I'll, I'll finish watching the game in bed. Time, you know, like, dude, you're, yeah, you're like, uh, yeah, yeah. you got one That's eye true. open. So it's tough, and it's, this would be this would be your first full season working full time, right? Yeah. Yeah, so like you don't actually—I don't think you've ever actually known that yeah. feeling of having to wake up at like six thirty the next fucking day. Uh, yeah, no, it's in order brutal. to do that. Yeah, so it's, yeah. so it's nice getting done at like six o'clock and then being able yeah, to I figure out that. shit. Especially right. this would be phenomenal if you're a content creator too. So you have those like three hours after yeah, football finishes. Yep. Mm-hmm. Like yeah, oh, that's definitely that's 11 a good idea. PM. Ty Plumrillo, I can't. Why do you this. always put these biased ass comments? It's in not here. biased. This guy's just a fucking genius. He says I was right, <clears throat> and he said Derrick Henry can most definitely catch the ball. Just doesn't get many targets because he's so good at running. Oh, I actually sense. remember the comment I made How after. How many fucking burner accounts do you have? <laughs> I remember the comment. I, I wish you had put the comment in here because I said I'm not sure how many how many lies are in this one statement. One, he's right. <laughs> Two, Derrick Henry can most definitely catch the ball. Three, he doesn't get targets because he's so good at running the ball. Like do you, you say one fact. Everything's a lie. There's Every so many lies. Every sentence in there is a lie. This was fucking ridiculous. Go back to the drawing board and recomment. Because you need to fucking it's clean yourself up. It's burner account. You're good, bro. You're good, bro. Just Don't think worry. about it. Every... Uh, never mind. It's great. Go it's ahead. a great just, comment. Just All ahead. right. Last one here. This is another like interaction. I just kind of wanted to throw this in there because I thought it was funny. We had a lot <laughs> of hate on Shane. Yeah. yeah so yeah. C. Dorsey comments, yeah, dude in the middle is what you call a liability in Flip Cup. And me like you being defensive. You. Right. thought he was talking about me being in the middle right. like of the show. Yeah. And I went and commented, I carried the team and anchored for the win. And then I realized, like, other people were commenting, like, dude in the middle on Nick's team is trash. Who was that dude, too, before Nick? He's why you lost. My dude fucking sucks. Yeah. <laughs> that guy's yeah. name is Shane, and he is in our E-Town Get Down League. So when He's he's, he's a former I, – I will. Uh, Shane's a former rookie champion. champion. He's rookie a, champion. Rookie champion. Came in first year, took yep. the belt. Yeah. He is also the best quarterback in our high school's history. So He's literally not saying anything. Yeah. Probably not, but he's he's a, he's a winner. Guys, and he didn't want to do anything but beat me in that flip cup game. That he wanted so badly to devastating. beat me. Devastating. Just couldn't do it. I will say though, Shane's the man. I, I won't. I won't accept the slander. Jury's out. Shane's the man. Jury's still He's out. The man. I mean, listen. Jury's hung. Shane's ah. the man, but the slander. This is it's not slander. He was trash. I didn't feel like he was the man. He didn't play well. Game. Okay, he didn't. He had a bad day. I just like my dude fucking sucks. <laughs> <laughs> my dude fucking sucks. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. I read it as like him yelling at me. Shut the fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> So good. All right, all right, all right. If you enjoyed today's episode, as always, hit that thumbs up. Make sure you're following these two assholes on Twitter as well as Fade the underscore public. Subscribe to the channel if you're new, and we shall see y'all on next week. Fade the public. Goodbye. Thanks, boys.